Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Mapped by Murder. Today, we say goodbye to Nigeria and head back to China, as I want to focus a little more on some of the cases that I know you guys don't get a lot of information or coverage of. Before we continue though, I'd like to ask that if you are new to the channel and like the content, then please consider stabbing that subscribe button. Wen Qian was born 16th of January 1975 in Budayuan Liaoning. He was 8 years old when his parents divorced. His younger brother, who was 6 at the time, stayed with their mother while Qian went to live with his father. Not long after his parents divorced, Qian's father was sentenced to 11 years in prison for the attempted murder of a man after an argument broke out over illegal gambling. Chiang's mother was already with somebody else by this point and did not want him, forcing him to go and live with his grandparents. Chiang grew up in the Shenyang district and he soon fell into the habit of begging. His stomping ground was Taiyuan Lu or Taiyuan Street. Because he was much smaller than many of the other people there, he was mercilessly bullied and often robbed. On one occasion, Chiang was beaten so badly that the people who passed his body recalled that they thought he was already dead. He woke up, covered in his own blood, he gritted his teeth and crawled his way back to Shenyang railway station. Chiang vowed, The future will not be peaceful, and when it comes to killing people, do not blink. It is hard, but it gets easier with practice. Over the years, Chiang would commit many petty crimes, theft, pickpocketing, burglary. When he would eventually meet a man called Wang, who taught him how to perfect his technique. Nevertheless, in June 1991, Chiang was caught and sentenced to two years in a labour camp. When Chiang was released in 1993, he was a different person. He headed back to Shenyang, Taiyuan Lu, and found a partner to work with. They committed several robberies until they spotted a man in his thirties dressed smartly. They pushed him to the ground and held him at knife point, taking roughly 20,000 yuan from him, which is around 2,200 pounds or $3,000. Chiang would later recall that he liked the rush that he got from using weapons. Chiang never really trusted his partners and he slowly began to distance himself from them, committing more crimes on his own whilst looking for new recruits who were young and naive. He hoped that they would listen to him and he would be their leader. Over the period of a few months, he found a group of people who he led on a crime spree. I will not use their names because there is not much documentation as to say who helped on which attack. In the summer of 1994, Chiang and his accomplices would spend their nights stalking parks in Shenyang looking for people to rob. On one night at around 10pm, they entered South Lake Park and located a couple in a secluded area. The men demanded that the couple hand over their money, but they refused. At this point, Chiang and his accomplices pulled out their knives and some rope. They tied the couple together and started to stab them, eventually tossing them into the lake before making their escape. A few nights later, the men went out again hungry for more. They found a couple walking in Youth Park. The men surrounded the couple and Chiang hit the male over the head with a large stick. Whilst his accomplices searched the man's pockets for money, Chiang dragged the woman to some nearby bushes and raped her, hitting her and leaving them both for dead. This would continue for several years. As the gang got more daring, Chiang began to worry that somebody would start talking and the police would become aware of who they were. And he was right. Early in 1996, the police caught Chiang committing a robbery. He would not tell them what he really did and before they could start asking too many questions and learn who he really was, he told them that he impersonated police officers in order to extort money from people. Subsequently, he was sentenced to another labour camp for three years and whilst there, he decided he would now work alone. 
Tian was released on the 4th of December 1998, six months early for good behaviour. He headed to South Canal in Shenyang where he attacked a woman with a large branch and raped her at the side of a river. Only three days later, he would attack again, attacking a woman with a metal bar and rape her too. He would later recall that within his first year of release, he committed more than 20 attacks, leaving at least 12 dead and raping 7 or 8 women. He said that he could have killed more, but he never checked on them and he never watched the news so he didn't actually know how many he killed from all of the attacks. Many of these would be in succession. One such spree would be on the 9th, 10th and 11th of May. In these three days, he killed six men and raped two women. Chiang would pose as a labour worker, often wearing dirty clothes, and he would take them to a dry cleaners in the Heping district. The family that owned the dry cleaners always spoke down to Xiang and mocked him, often overcharging him for their service. If only they had known how deadly that would turn out to be. One night in July 2000, Xiang made his way to the dry cleaners with a pig's knife on his waist, looking around to check that nobody was there. Then he knocked on the door at around 5am. An old lady opened the door and was immediately stabbed. She looked at Xiang and asked him why did you stab me? He replied, It's because your family are in charge of my high price. She would go on to say, Why didn't you tell me? Tian coldly replied to her, It's simple. I don't want to waste my words with you. Before stabbing her several more times and ripping the golden earrings from her ears and several hundred dollars from her pockets. A few nights after this incident, Chiang went out to the same river where he had previously raped two women. As he was looking for his next victim, he noticed something. All the people seemed organised. The homeless people, the food vendors, the couples out on dates, just something didn't seem right to him, so he didn't commit a crime that night. He returned the next night to find the same people in very similar places. He would follow this routine for several days. He soon learned that they were the police. They were now laying in wait, trying to catch whoever was responsible for these crimes. He now knew that the police also didn't know it was him. Even though the police were heavily investigating the crimes, Xiang could not help himself. In August, he found himself climbing a scaffolding structure and on the second floor, he saw a woman sleeping in one room on a sofa and in the room beside hers around seven or eight men. They must have been labour workers. He silently crept in and hit her over the head and raped her. He would take what cash he could find and climb back down. Only when he was there, a police car was waiting for him. He silently dropped the metal ball and his pig's knife behind his back and made his way to the police car. They asked him what he was doing. He told them that he was working for a local market and was unloading vegetable trucks. The police searched him but found nothing and told him to go home. Later that month, he would break into a chicken farmhouse and find three people sleeping inside, a teenage girl and her parents. Chiang took a pickaxe from inside the farm and used this to kill the girl's parents before going into her bedroom and striking her in the head. He would then take her body outside and have sex with her corpse, committing necrophilia. Over the years, the police started making connections between the crimes, matching DNA from the rapes and the pattern from each murder, but they would get their biggest breakthrough from the most unlikely of events. A man named Zhao was arrested on June the 25th 2003 for stealing a motorcycle. During his interview, he was asked why he stole the bike and he told the police, well, my friend asked me to rob couples with him down at South Canal, but it was raining. He told me we can go a different time, but to bring sharp knives because they always hand over their money. After some investigative work, the police soon learned that this friend was Chang. Over the next few days, 
information was gathered on Chiang, and police learned his mother lived in Yaobao village and that he was on his way to see her. They requested the help of local police who luckily enough had an officer who had grown up with Chiang and would be able to recognise him. The police were driving around the village looking for him and sure enough the local officer would spot Chiang and point him out, resulting in his immediate arrest that was at gunpoint. Chiang would plead guilty to all of his crimes and be sentenced to death. On November 15, 2005, Chiang was led into a dark room placed on a bed where a single pistol was raised and pointed to the back of his head. One shot would ring out, bringing an end to his life and hopefully bringing a sense of justice to the victim's families. Thank you for listening to the case of Wang Qian and remember to always stay safe. If anything has happened to you or someone that you know in your city or in your country and you would like me to cover it, please feel free to get in contact.